this is it's kind of interesting to be asked to do this because I was when I started in this industry I was the young person and we all were <laughs> so so that's kind of a, um, a break on this uh oh we don't have the new slides um, do you have a different the one that was in my pocket the, the way I was going to start this is um, Heather asked me to add a slide that showed a trend that it was quite troubling for all of us as we came up in industry. And that was that in the um, 90s and the beginning part of this decade, we laid off a huge number of people in this industry. And the result was that we had a curve that went like this. So we had a double hump, and in the middle was a gap. And that gap has, of course, aged over time. And those people are the people who are now running things and in many instances are the CEOs and leaders. Unfortunately, unfortunately nope, I may not have saved it. Never mind. We'll just forget that. So anyway, they, um, in that gap, what we have found over the last five years in doing a number of interviews about the new generation of CEOs is that they may not be the people that had the daring and the bravado. They are people who have been trained to satisfy Wall Street. And that's not 100%, but it's a very troubling trend. So what are we doing right now that it looks, if you look at numbers, that we're getting ready to do the same thing again? In 2008, there were 659,000 people employed in this industry. Today, there are 624,000. That's a fairly dramatic drop in between 2008 and 2010. And we don't know what that number will be at the end of 2011. But um, it's not going to go up, and and that's the truth. Now in Europe, there has been a two percent increase, not on the space side, but on the defense side, has driven that, and that's because people who used to be employed by the ministries of defense have been shifted into industry, and as costs and, and uh, economic pressures go in, that will also affect that. So so we've got a little bit of a, a strange economy going on right now, but the bad part of it is that we actually are recreating that gap of leadership so that if you all and the young people who are here today leave, that is, that is going to make you work. The, the message then is that just as when Katie was, um, I'm sorry, when Heather, my daughter has a friend named Katie Berry, so I keep saying Katie instead of Heather. When Heather was your all's age, that gap was there and she was forced to come in faster and with more um, talent than her predecessors. The same holds true for young people today. So that, that's kind of the core message, that those people who are in the room today that are young professionals face a greater challenge than, than ever before because you're going to have to step up with a broader set of skills faster um, because of that gap. <clears throat> um, just so you'll know, the Aviation Week workforce study has been conducted for 16 years. Um, we I started off just identifying career opportunities because we noticed that as new technologies were emerging, they were taking the best and brightest, and we as an industry or as an enterprise were no longer getting them. Um, we also wanted to put a face to who A&D professionals are because it became increasingly clear, and as I just very indelicately said the other day, um, I can remember having this conversation in 1999 and a group of engineering and technology leaders at the front of the room wondering, why can't we get the young people to come into our industry? And I'm looking at them and they all have bad comb overs and, you know, I'm like, I can tell you why. <laughs> you know, we, we got to put a better face on this. And um, so that was part of it too. Um, the other thing is that it is going, what we have been doing about laying people off and letting core competencies go is going to affect our long-term capability. And I think that's a very scary thing. In 2004, we launched a partnership with Aerospace Industries Association, AIAA, National Defense Industries Association, and NASA to do a more complete study that would be the authoritative source of credible information because there was so much disinformation out there. Norm Augustine went before uh, the president's panel and said we were going to have um, retirements at 37 percent by 2006. That did not happen, and it was not true. And he had been given information that was based on what 
someone said, someone said, and I asked him one time, I said, trace that back, and he said, I have no idea. It wasn't based on data. It was based on folklore. So we had to come up with some really good, credible data. Um, right now, this is, oh, here's the, this is the chart I was trying to talk about. This is where we are right now. And if you look at it, the gap I was talking about, this is, this double hump is what, and we've corrected it to some degree. This is where we hired the most here and here over the last decade. This is the decline I talked to you about in terms of employment. Now, um, this week for our study, what we're trying to do, what NASA challenged us to do and AIA was to find out what is driving decisions about how people are choosing careers and employers. And um, we are doing this in a four-wave process. The first is we, once every five years, we do a reader-user study, which is similar to a climate survey or engagement survey that you would do within your own organizations. What makes people happy about their work? What makes them dissatisfied about their work? The last time we did this, it was very interesting. We found that 90% um, of the employees believe that they are in the top rung of their organization. That, that says something about our supervision. We're not really letting people know. <laughs> so so just, we will be doing that again in May. The corporate study looks at demographics, data relative to um, technological challenge in terms of investment in R&D, investment in tools to assist with design and development, um, professional development. Um, as you know, Ed's cause for being is that he believes people need restorative time to contemplate their navel and, and come up with the next great thing. That's part of this. How much is being allowed for that? Um, what we've learned thus far is about this gap in leadership, that the retirements were overstated. Um, the lack of available workforce was overstated dramatically. We left kids on campus. When employers go out and say they won't hire anybody with less than a 3.7 grade point average and they're in the fields that you all are in, that narrows the field dramatically. So we left 30, over 30% 30 of the kids on campus last year with no jobs, saying that we didn't have enough. Um, the issue is mix of skills and competency. Um, the pay that we are offering people, you all as a government entity are well aware of this, but in industry it's the same thing, um, finance and consulting. And we have been rotating an article among the young professionals that one of our advisory boards sent us, and it's friends don't let friends do finance. So, <laughs> and it, it is funny, I mean, but, but it's the truth. We are losing very, very highly edged people to careers that are not going to create products and make stuff for the future. Um, the attrition is higher than desired among young professionals. I will tell you the other place that we are noticing a, an alarming voluntary attrition rate is among highly talented and skilled artisans and craftsmen on the hourly workforce. And if that doesn't, if we don't get somebody to start paying attention to that and vocational education in this country, we've got another problem. Um, the emerging STEM fields are pulling away from A&D, particularly biotech, and um, I would say on the, the women in particular are being attracted into new fields where they perceive that there will not be a prejudgment about gender. <clears throat> and um, young people in the past did not get the idea that what they did on Facebook and published about themselves would affect their security clearance and that has become a big issue as well. And there's all kinds of tools that are being put together to take into high schools and middle schools to tell them you're not going to become the Marine, the Navy SEAL if you do this stuff. And it's, it's three tickets for speeding are as bad as one drug charge and it, because it shows a persistence of bad judgment, that kind of thing. <clears throat> we also found no clear message as to who aerospace is if the pay is equal, the technological challenge is the most important factor driving career choices. Um, internal career development replacing external. People love these types of events, but they also want to get together outside with their peers. And so the community sense of this enterprise is very important. Um, diversity, I grew up in valuing diversity and we went to training in the 80s and, and learned all about it. 
Now it is about respect for the individual. And that really is where most young people believe they want to be. Um, major differences based on the size of company with regard to retirement, average age, and job satisfaction. Smaller companies are more flexible and are offering more of the types of workplaces that people are interested in being, but they can't offset the money. Boeing and Lockheed have the money. Aerovironment gives you 20% time off to go play. Which, where are you going to go? If you've got a huge uh, loan, it may be <laughs> to Boeing. Um, the Young Professional Study has a 10% random sample from 13 companies, including NASA. The, um, we will track them over their career duration, as long as they all respond, and see how their attitudes about work and what influences their decisions changes. Um, we're trying to make sure that we continuously assess expectations versus the reality. And um, we also need to continually assess how they seek information, how young people seek information, and drive toward that, because it changes dramatically. In the first week of the student survey, which is running right now, we have found a trend that they are using their phones to respond to a survey that I couldn't even see on my phone. So, you know, there, there is an issue there. The student survey is a 10% random sample from seven universities, um, MIT's included. Where are you? There she is. MIT is included. Um, we're assessing how they make decisions regarding university major and first employer where they are getting information and how. Um, the um, current employees among young professionals, these are the factors that seem most important, that they highly value how their companies lead, what they're doing and how they lead. And I heard a lot of that at the breakfast table this morning. I, I think that's interesting. Um, and how they handle downsizing. Be insensitive, be um, dispassionate, and we'll pay a price for it over the long term. Current employees feel overwhelmed with activity versus value. Um, I heard this yesterday about email. Um, but they do feel valued. That's good. Um, current employees believe that there is more money to be made elsewhere. We probably all know that. And current employees are concerned about the lack of strategy, be it defense, national security, or space. That there does not seem to be direction in any of those categories, and that this has gone on not just one administration, several. Um, there's a bigger chasm between the 20s and 30-somethings than between 20s and 50s. I found that very interesting, and Garth Henning, who's one of the NASA advisory board members, said he just doesn't get these 20-year-olds, and he's 37. <laughs> um, young professionals are planning to stay. They want to be here. Um, they, their student loans do have them trapped, and we are totally insensitive to that as, a, as an enterprise. Um, they chose their careers and majors based on a single person or a major event. Columbia and Challenger and the bridge in Minneapolis were the most often mentioned. Um, they are highly influenced by personal relationships and sense of community. Um, many of the people in my age group, uh, we thought we were INTJs and therefore we were happier being off by ourselves. That's just not the case with most folks anymore. And, I, you know, is that because they grew up tapping into a phone and lack personal relationships? Who knows? But that's the reality. Um, and the pay, the last five years, has been all over the place. We've gone up, we've gotten down, we've got new grads making more than people who have been on the job for two and three years. And that's not a good situation to have either. <clears throat> um, the stability in terms of location, we did two focus groups. 92% cited the need to repay student loans as the reason for not wanting to move. However, most of them do want to get out of their parents' house or having a roommate. Um, and those are things that probably most of us did not have to do. 18% um, do want to start a family, and so that, again, is part of the dichotomy. What makes them leave? It's always their direct supervisor. I have two minutes left. 78% need more flexibility. And um, we, we underestimate, we think job rotations every six months is kind of what they talk about when they need variety. It actually, what we found was that they want, they being people in this room, you, want um, variety in what they're doing day to day and hour to hour. They don't want to sit and do the same thing for eight hours. Um, and they need to feel their ideas are valued. Um, our focus work now is that they hear the message of security. Um, 
not using email. They're using their phones instead of email. They want layers of information. I think we heard that yesterday. They don't understand the lack of message around what A&D is about or what NASA is about. They don't get it. And one young woman told a group of CEOs that you all are whining, whining, whining. We do amazing things, which I thought was very brave of her, but I couldn't have done it. And um, again, the important thing is that, that most young professionals do plan to stay in this industry. They're not planning on leaving if we can keep them here. <clears throat> um, while public service is a factor, it's not the to the degree that we've been told in the past. Um, the finance and consulting industries are on campus whining and dining the students by the time they are in their, at the end of their freshman year. We certainly aren't. Um, we certainly aren't giving them tickets to plays and, and championship ball games. So that's, those are the things that we're up against. Um, and this was heartening to me that over 20% indicated that they're very interested in careers in academia, which as you know, that's part of the limiting factor for us. Um, we are in this corporate study right now. The university students study is running now. The YP survey will run the first two weeks of May. The reader user study runs the month of May. We'll do the analysis in June and July and we'll publish the results on August 22nd. National Aerospace Week is in September. Use the data prolifically. Um, the white paper will be distributed. Ed will have it, a link to it somewhere in NASA. Use it, use it, use it. That's all I have.